Senator David Senjum was elected to the Senate in 2002, began service in 2003. He has served 20 years in the Senate, total days served 7,076. It's my honor to present Senator David Senjum. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, that's a lot of days. It's a lot of trips back and forth to Rochester and just one speeding ticket, so that's not so bad. Uh, probably should have had some more, but, uh, but didn't. Uh, kind of a special day. These, uh, these days, uh, you wonder whether as you have gone through these 20 years and listened to all those speeches and you think about the day that's your turn and and you uh, you want to you want to give this little perfect talk, and you know that's not possible. And and then you listen to all these speeches, and then you forget your own, and uh, because you're so wrapped up in the emotions of the moment, and and all the things that people are saying, and in such a special place, and 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 that's really what I I think my theme will be as I go through what my comments might be. Just that this is really really a special place, and somehow somehow I got here. I don't know how. Knocked on a lot of doors, walked down a lot of alleys, and uh, had a lot of doors slammed on me, and all of that. And we all have, and uh, that's that's the nature of of getting here. And then you get here, and you walk in this enormously beautiful chamber. And I will never forget. In uh, I suppose in about November 2002, as we did our orientation with uh, Pat Slavin then. Uh, and I think, uh, as I recall, there was. I've got it written down here. Senator Bach, Rosen, Rood, Thomasoni, Uyghur, I think. Uyghur, okay. Uh, <laughs> Dibble. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Uh, that were, uh, and of course, all the people that have since gone, but these are the people here and that, that still remain. Uh, so we had that orientation. I remember uh, walking back here with Senator Gaither and looking around this. And think, Gaither, I, I, I don't know if I even belong here. I, I don't know if I fit. I don't know if I'm good enough to play in this arena, for goodness sakes. And, and I remember so well, uh, I didn't even want a microphone on my room, or on my desk, rather. And Senator Torres Ray, I, I sat in that desk my first couple of years. Uh, my name might even be in the drawer. It might be. <laughs> uh, but that's where I sat. And I, uh, I sat very quietly for quite a while and uh, didn't want to speak, and, uh, and now today I'm going to find out this microphone is about the hardest thing to give up that uh, I'll ever have, because <laughs> once you put it back in that saddle, you're done. <laughs> you're done. This is the last time that you get to speak at this floor unless you uh, do like Senator Rood did, uh, Rude did uh, run again, and I don't think that's in the cards. So uh, in any event, uh, a special moment, and, and I also want to say just all of the people that have talked today, and all of those people before, all of those years, uh, what it says about this place is that we're this, we're this fabric of Minnesota, and, and we all come together, different people from different places in different, 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 and yet we come here and we try to do the good will of the people. And we, we have our buttons and we try to press the, the right button at the right time. But we all come together as, as 67 different people, divergent in every way possible, and we come together for the common good. And that is the greatness of this place. And then just look at, look at where we're in. Look at the inscriptions. Look at the art. If you didn't know it, I was on the art committee during the restoration. $975 million estimated value of art in this capital, $975 million. It's just incredible, and, and certainly the marble, and, and the desks and the furniture, you know, totally historic, never to be replaced. So don't wear them out, <laughs> because they're good, they're good stuff. I'm also reminded, uh, some people talk about the first day they came to the Capitol. I came to the Capitol in high school, and the only person I remember in this room was Senator Limmer. <laughs> That's the only one I remember from high school, uh, <laughs> and uh, and he's still here and doing well. <laughs> 
So again, special times, special places, and, and special memories. And just, just to go through a, a couple of my first bill on this floor, of all things, couldn't have been, well, I'll just tell you what it was, it was chemical cremation. Can you imagine that being a first bill? It had to do with something Mayo wanted to do, and, and it had to do with, I can get into the gory part, uh, literally putting a body in uh, potassium hydroxide, heating up to 300 degrees, and in about, uh, about three hours it turns into soap. And uh, all is well, all that remains is the calcium, beautiful, beautiful uh, remnants, if you will, for the, for the urine. But, uh, but that was my first bill. And so guess what? A lot of questions on that bill. Way too many questions. Way too many questions for a person that didn't even want this microphone in his hand. But uh, we all do that and we all go through those experiences and, and just fond, fond memories. And, and, and then I remember so well, I'm just going to go through a litany of a few of these, uh, the Twin Stadium. And some of you people were here during the Twin Stadium. And we had that certain night, I don't know, two or three in the morning, it seemed like. Uh, Senate Republicans caucused up. And uh, Senator Day uh, asked, well, who in, the, who in the H is going to vote for this thing? And so he and Senator Rosen and I, we raised our hand. Nobody else was. Well, are we going to watch the stadium go? And, you know, whatever. I think we had maybe 30 votes, 32 or something like that at the time. And, and, uh, and where's the stadium going to go? Well, and, you know, we, we came out here and they kept the board open for, I think, at least an hour, Tom, right? A long time anyway. And blink, 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 those votes came, and, and we have a twin stadium today. And, but that, uh, I think that's the longest I've ever, that I've ever experienced the board being open. Uh, but, it, but it certainly got, it got done. I remember, I think I commented on this the other day, uh, the Prairie Island cast storage. Last day of the session, all the agreements are made. The bills, all the bills are agreed to. And, and, uh, and all we had to do is come up the last day and, uh, and, and, and run, run, run them off the floor, if you will. Uh, and then the cast storage came up. Started at 11 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> some people still in this room grabbed the microphones and just fed them to each other back and forth and back and forth. Went all the way to midnight, from 11 o'clock to midnight, uh, into special session. I remember Senator Metzen up there. He wasn't a very happy camper. Uh, he, I don't think he broke his gavel, uh, Mr. President, but uh, he was pretty close. Uh, we came in the next day. I don't remember how the parade. I don't remember how it all got. It all got worked out. He, it always, it always does. But it was, it wasn't so, it wasn't so fun. And I, <laughs> I got a Viking Stadium. Senator Rosen carried the Viking Stadium bill. Now I'm, we're we're really getting a little inside caucus here now. But uh, this is the way it kind of was. And and uh, and she just worked so hard on this bill. And so we caucus it up. And. Uh, and, and my new class of 2010, <laughs> Senator Gazelka included, Senator Newman, remember that? You call for the vote. So we have the vote. We have the vote in caucus. Uh, it's uh, 22 to 15 not to do the Viking Stadium. And that didn't sound very good because uh, I'd scheduled that vote for that afternoon. And it was, uh, you know, it's like 1 o'clock or you know, it's actually about 2 o'clock now and we're going to do it at 3. And so we have all this discussion, all this discussion. <laughs> I gave the caucus a half an hour to elect a new majority leader and I was coming down here and Fishbach came down here and, and, uh, and I just waited. And they walked in and they walked in and we opened it up and there were no motions and we ran the Viking Stadium. We had our 15 votes and Senator Bach delivered that, let's see, 21 <laughs> and we, we passed it with 36. Now everybody likes the Viking Stadium, I think. Now we just argue about the stadium reserve, so that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that lives on in, in many ways. Uh, the shutdown, and this is not about me, I just got to tell you this though, it's kind of an interesting story. Uh, the shutdown, and that was, uh, there was an occasion where Governor Dayton was coming down to Rochester to rip on us Republicans for, you know, being just not willing to, not willing to work with him and so on and so forth, and, and Michelle Kel Helgen uh, called me ahead of time and said, Senator would, would, you, would you take, would you, would you have lunch with the governor? Well, of course I have lunch with the governor, and so, well, we'll just go to Michael's. I don't know, maybe some of you know Michael's in Rochester is not there anymore, but, uh, but it was a, a pretty good restaurant. So I called Charlie Kappas, the owner, and I say, Charlie, can you get us kind of a table back in the corner? And he does that. 
And so we just chat. And so I'm thinking, well, what am I going to tell the governor? I mean, it's, uh, I got to, I got to pull on his heartstrings. And so, so we got this. We, we, we got, you know, we got chains on the, we got chains on the door. If you didn't know that, some of the people around here knew that. But chains on the door. And so, Governor Dayton, I say, you know, uh, you're the only one in, in the galaxy, on the galaxy that can can call this off. I, I can't call it off. I, my folks aren't going to agree to this at all. Uh, they're going to, they're, they're, they're firm, they're resolute. You, you're the only one to call it off, Governor. And Governor, you remember Perp Dirty Perpich in your speech during your inauguration day and, and how you were fond of Rudy and you wanted to emulate him? And, and, and Ru Rudy Perpich wouldn't allow this to go any further, Governor. Would he? No, I don't think he would. And, and by the way, Orville Freeman, I used to walk back uh, by a picture of Luther Youngdahl and as I went to my office down in the, on the east side here. Uh, and, and all I know, I don't know anything about Luther Youngdahl except my parents used to speak fondly of him. And uh, I said, Luther Youngdahl wouldn't do this. He was a good Lutheran, had a good Lutheran uh, uh, ministry kind of history in his family, and he wouldn't do this. He'd call it off. The short story, and I, I don't know if this ever had anything to do with it, but anyway, the short story is he didn't go to the rally, he came back to the Capitol and called it off. And, and that's the way it is. And Senator Bach and Senator Scoy, we talk about getting along together. Uh, a minority guy getting to uh, pass the Destination Medical Center bill uh, only because of Senator Scoy, Senator Bach, our ability to work together, had a good idea, perhaps the largest economic development uh, initiative in, uh, I don't know, 585 million. You can tell how big that is. That's a lot of money, and it's, a, you know, it's doing good things, and it will do good things, but uh, only because people had the ability to come together and to work together, and I am so forever grateful for that. And then I just looked on my list. I talk about the mental health crisis centers. Uh, uh, we got a good start on those. We have nine. I'll fondly remember that. I hope we can get more as future legislators come together because they're terribly important across the state of Minnesota. Uh, and, and then I just note here my German experience in Sabina Engel sitting up here. And so thank you so much, Sabina, for your willingness to take me to Germany, to get me involved in this energy transition idea, to see the future, and try to go there, because uh, that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do in every respect. Not only energy, but see the future and go there. Try to find it. Try to figure it out, because it's that important. And so as you think about, at least I think about <laughs> my history here, and, I think about, uh, I, I, can't, I can't not speak to this at least. Uh, so here I am coming in in 2002 and 2006. We have an election. Our, our little Senate Republican group loses uh, nine members, including Senator Rood, and it's a painful day. And we've got four people running for leader, uh, or maybe five, including Senator Day. I don't know. I can't remember. Senator Day says, I, I'm, I'm not going to do this, Sanjay. I'm not just going to do this. He tells me this about 10 minutes before. Well, fine, Senator Day, that's the way it is. I guess you're not going to do it. So we, we go into our caucus and uh, we make nominations for leader. And Senator Rosen's sitting behind me, and, uh, you know, the, the four people are nominated, and then she says, I nominate Senator Sanjum. And then I say something I can't even say on the floor of the Senate. Uh, <laughs> but, but it was, <laughs> no, I just can't. No, I won't. Uh, but uh, so, you know, the election goes forward. I don't even vote for myself, and somehow I get to be leader. I don't even know. And uh, I identify myself in the press conference later as this moderate Republican. What, are you, what kind of Republican? You know, moderate Republican. No. And that's the kind of label of being for life, and I'm for a rhino for life, but that's okay. I'm proud of it. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, we try to get stuff done as we're here. Uh, but uh, pretty interesting. So I do this for a little while. By the way, I come into their caucus, and... Uh, uh, we're, uh, we got a $100,000 note and we got uh, $15,000 in the bank, and boy, that's not much power. Uh, but you got to plow ahead, we, we got that paid off. And after a while, I, I got to thinking, you know, this is such hard work, and we're going to do this. We might as well be in the majority in 2010. I had no idea how to get that. All you do is, we know we'd never have enough money, so we just had to find the right candidates. And people like uh, Senator Miller and back of me and, and, and others uh, that uh, came on board then. And my goodness sakes, uh, 
I'll just brag about this a little bit. We went from 21 to 37. It was 46 to 21. That was a painful day, wasn't it, Senator Bach? <laughs> 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 Worse for Polka Miller. <laughs> and by the way, just talking about uh, mentioning Polka, Larry Polka Miller, and uh, Senator Gazalka mentioned it. Uh, oddly enough, perhaps, I don't know, Senator Bo Polka Miller and I got to be very, very good friends. Uh, we haven't talked for a while, but uh, through this all, this, this, uh, this thing about from one person to another, this kind of trying to work things through, you do get to be good friends. And uh, you don't always have your spears up. You, you can put your spears down, you can work together, and we certainly did. So, so many things to remember, and so many things to think about with respect to this place. Uh, uh, and I'll just go through some, you know, the, the decorum. Keep the decorum solid, keep it, make it better if you can, because uh, this is the Minnesota Senate. This is that special place. This is the bastion, if you will, of, I think, uh, the senior body within, within the legislative process of the state capitol. And just keep it strong and keep it, uh, keep it finely tuned as we, as we have. And, 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 and understand that this place, and I've said this before in other speeches, uh, this wonderful place, why, why did they build it? Why it is so wonderful? It's for the great debate. You got to have the great debate in here, and you can, and you should, and you must, frankly, for the good of Minnesota. But when you walk out those doors, you know, just be ready to go out and eat with somebody, because that's that's the kind of that's the kind of system we have to have. But in here, game on. This is why they built this place. They didn't build it for a love fest. They built it for the great debate and continue to have the great debate in this room, because that's what it's for. We've spent a lot of money to build this, and it's uh, back in 1905, a lot of money, and they built it for the great debate. The last one I'm going to say about is just maybe for a couple thank yous is, is and this one's going to maybe shatter the windows a little bit, but I would just say from statehood until 1972, uh, we were a Senate that didn't have party designation. For the last 50 years, we have had party designation. Does it work better? Think about that. Does it work better? Does it, frankly, does it put uh, purpose above policy, or party rather? I don't think so. I think we come up here with a purpose, and I think party mixes us up a little bit. I think if we all came in here as Dave Sengem, Tom Bach, John Jen, Jen, what is your name again? I always had trouble with that. <laughs> Jasinski, <laughs> from day one I've had trouble with that. But, uh, you know, if we all came up here with just our name and not our D or an R, maybe this place would work better. And I was thinking about, just think of these inscriptions. If, if we were going to build a building like this today, would we build it in this grandeur? Would we build it with these inscri inscriptions? I don't think we'd spend that money because we just, the politics wouldn't allow us to do that. And that's true, you can extend this out from, for a long ways. Would we do it? I don't think we would. And I just uh, want to maybe close with thanking a few people, certainly, as I look uh, to the gallery today, Senator Phil, or not Senator, <laughs> Chaplain Phil Shaw, if you will, a chaplain I appointed in, in uh, 2000. 11 and 12, uh, thank you for being here today. It's very special. Phil, uh, by the way, uh, Mike, you can just call him any time. I'll just give you permission. I think he'd be willing to come down and, 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 and pray for this group uh, any time that you call. Uh, certainly the front desk staff, the sergeants, all those people. It's hard to mention them all. But I have to mention uh, somebody real special, really a couple people. Uh, there's Beth up there. Beth is best. She always will be. Now, this is getting a little tough now. <laughs> but Beth, uh, thank you so much for what you've done. Told me together for, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 years. Uh, you've been very special and very loyal, and uh, you were always the best. And of course, there's uh, people at the uh, work committee administrator, and uh, there's a committee administrator, maybe some of you remember Julian Plowman. She's walk watching from the Pentagon today. and. Uh, 
thinking about you, Julian. Hopefully all is well. Megan Shea certainly worked with me. Susie Drew is up there someplace, or was. Uh, Susie, you're special. I find it really hard to share you with Senator Bach, but uh, I think it's working out fine, <laughs> and, and will. And then certainly Darren Lee, and uh, I'll just go on, Allie Eilers. I don't know if Marissa's up there, my, my uh, communications person, but Marissa, you're just fabulous. Uh, I can't uh, leave this without recognizing you. But uh, what I want to do, maybe just in closing, is just to say, uh, we all talk about this inscription, but there's a little one that you hardly ever see right back there. It's hardly ever seen and certainly hardly ever referred to. But the noblest motive is the public good. The noblest motive is the public good. That's what we come here for. That's what we try to do. The noblest motive is the public good. Senators, it has been a pleasure to be here for 20 years. I'll miss it. It was a hard walk over here this morning. It was a hard walk into this chamber, no question about it. But I wish you well. Godspeed. God bless our great Minnesota Senate.